It's, a, it's an honor and a, and a privilege to be able to introduce our guest speaker today. Uh, he's, he's our new Lincoln County Falcons football coach. But uh, for those of you who have been around for a few years like I have, at least here back in the day, uh, you know that he's not new to Lincoln County football. He's not new to the pit. When you see him on the sidelines on Friday night, it won't be the first time he's been on those sidelines. And uh, uh, it's not the first time he's worn the Falcon gear. And so uh, uh, back last spring when I met with the principal, uh, or I'm sorry, last fall, when I met with the principal, Mr. Garris, and we were talking about the search for the new coach, I told Mr. Garris, I said, uh, Principal Garris, I need you to search the world wide and bring in the best coach you can possibly find for Lincoln County Falcon football. I said, but there's one person I'm going to call, and if he says yes, you can cancel your search. Uh, and and when, I called, when I called Tim, uh, my first question to him was, hey, you know, we're making a change down here. Do you know anybody who's interested? <laughs> And then I, I was driving on the interstate and I about wrecked it because my first thought was, why did I say that? Because I really I'm calling because I need him to say yes. <laughs> and so uh, the conversation went from there. And, uh, you know, we rekindled an old friendship from back in the day uh, during our conversations. Uh, Tim was a sophomore when I was a senior. And uh, uh, so I had a pleasure of being on the same football field with him there for a while. And uh, uh, I don't think there's anybody else out there that personifies what Falcon football means to somebody who is close to Falcon football, and I'm speaking from myself and from my heart there, I don't think there's anybody else that would personify that more than, than Tim Johnson. So uh, let's all welcome Tim, and uh, Tim, stage is yours. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. It's been so much fun um, past few months reconnecting with folks in Lincoln County. Of course, my, my parents still live right there off Dunroman Lane where I grew up for most of my childhood and uh, ran around uh, wreaking havoc in our neighborhood and, and uh, having a lot of fun uh, riding bicycle and running around with all, all of my buddies. That A lot of them still live here in Fayetteville and Lincoln County, so it, it's just been amazing reconnecting with uh, everyone. Uh, so honored to have Coach Ellis here today. Uh, I remember way back when going to, to ball games, watching him coach basketball when I was just a, a little fella. And uh, Coach, I believe you coached, uh, was it Sherry McKinney that came through during your, were you coaching during that time when, when Sherry McKinney came through? And, when I went out, we went out to the high school, I went out as the athletic director. I didn't, didn't do mm -hmm. any coaching. Mm -hmm. What about at Old Fettville Central? Was that was that when uh, I, I remember some of those teams back then? You're just a, just great mentors, you and Coach Evans and and uh, and Coach Ezel, absolutely. Uh, uh, just just a great staff, great men who who really way back in the in the seventies at Old Fettville Central laid a foundation for for you know folks like. Bill Heath and, and many others who are now leaders in the community and, and, and were great mentors uh, for us. And so really appreciate, great great seeing you today and appreciate all you've done for our community. Appreciate what all you guys do for our community as business leaders and, and uh, educators. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been wonderful being able to visit Fayetteville, coming back to see uh, again, my parents and my brother, sister all live right here in Lincoln County still and have for all these years. So I've stayed connected from afar, but um, it, it's really fun to get back and, and be part of the community again at the high school. I'm so excited about what I see going on at the high school um, and, and throughout the Lincoln County education system. Uh, really, really good things, exciting things uh, that Dr. Heath is leading the way. And, and Mr. Garris there at the high school and, and all of our other uh, great teachers and leaders across the county. Um, just uh, education's in a, in a really exciting place right now. And, and I've been blessed. Uh, you know, I just, uh, all I can do is thank the good Lord for my journey 
um, as, as I gone, as I left Lincoln County, went went to Vanderbilt. Uh, who knows how in the world I ever got in, into Vanderbilt? I, I I don't I don't know if there's anything I did academically uh, to deserve that opportunity, but uh, it was a great experience. Uh, even even though we never um, had the success on the football field that that I would like to have had. It was still a great experience going out there and playing in all those SEC stadiums. And, uh, yes, would have liked to add a little more success. You know, they, the, the thing that uh, uh, you build character through trials and challenges and, and sports, you build losing builds character. You know? And there was a point in time, you know, that I said, well, good Lord, I, I believe I've, I've got character running out my ears here. I'm ready to have a little more success. And uh, – <laughs> and it was a great experience, just the, the guys they have to know. And just seeing things, it's such a, an amazing, uh, from an amazing perspective there uh, through uh, the Vanderbilt experience. But through my coaching and teaching experience, and I've, I've had the great opportunity to, to teach kids all the way from kids who have learning challenges and that wonderful experience with that, all the way to uh, students who had um, advanced placement classes. Uh, teaching several advanced placement classes over the years. So that broad range of experience really in a lot of different places, both public and private schools, uh, really gave me um, uh, a lot of wonderful experience, uh, taught me a lot about how to approach um, a variety of situations, been in metropolitan schools with students over 2,500 uh, enrollment um, at schools, and then at the same time been at Rural, little rural schools that might have just about 400 uh, and again public and private side so uh, that that experience that journey has been a great blessing and I, and I hope to bring all of those all, everything I've learned uh, from that experience to to Lincoln County and and, and uh, whatever I've, I've learned obviously share with my colleagues share with share with the players and um, just um, loving the interaction I'm having with the coaches, with the, the players. Our kids are working so hard uh, to – and this is the time of year, really. Everybody focuses on football during the fall, but this is the time of year where, where teams are built for football during the off season. And, and you know, I was just uh, – I'll share with you something I want to share with the team. I haven't shared it with them yet, so I'm going to share it with you first. You're going get to get it before the football players do. Something I was going to share with the guys today – is the definition of grit, and uh, and it's some of you have probably read the book. Uh, I can't remember the author who wrote the book, but there's a book that came out several years ago, Grit. And if you haven't read that book, I, I strongly recommend it. But the definition: courage and resolve, strength of character. He displayed true grit as a Navy pilot. Synonyms include courage, bravery. Metal, backbone, spirit, strength of character, strength of will, of will, moral fiber, steel, nerve, fortitude, to toughness, and on and on and on. Resolve, tenacity, perseverance. I tell you what, you know, if, if I think all of us, if we could guarantee that our, our students and our student athletes have that instilled in them through their experience, through their through their years of education. If we could just accomplish that alone, I think most of us would feel really good about the job we're doing in education as we uh, build a foundation for these kids to be launched into their years of college and on into their careers. So um, those are the things that, while we're building them physically, obviously, we're, we're trying to build a team that can compete on Friday nights from a physical standpoint. Really what's so important to me is that we're building kids that that uh, have the, the moral fiber, the integrity, the, 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 uh, the metal, and simply put, the grit to go on and leave Lincoln County, have great success in college, have great success in their careers, in their family life, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's the part of coaching that um, while I, I had a great experience in administration over the past seven or eight years, uh, that's the part that, that really I miss, that, that bond you get with coaching young men um, and, and women and um, just couldn't be more excited to have this opportunity to now. And, you know, you talk about education. We were just talking about Dr. Heath at <coughs> Lincoln County. Uh, was, he was sharing just a few minutes ago at our table um, that Lincoln County had applied for a grant that has a table that, uh, you know, through the technology, that our, our CTE program 
uses that can display a three-dimensional image that our students can can do you know we we had the old the real frog back in the day well they can do this through a three-dimensional image now uh, on this table that the, this grant allowed us to get it's those kind of things you're seeing in education now that around the 1990s i'd say there was a real transformation that occurred in education and it's funny because it's about that time that there was a transformation in football as well just the old traditional ways you know you could have taken a picture of a class back when I was going to school, say in the 1980s, and it wouldn't have been a, a much different looking class than say 1910. Um, the, the traditional mode of teaching was, well, I'm the teacher, I'm going to supply the information, this in the textbook, me in the textbook, I'll, I'll supply the information. You as a student, you're just gonna consume it, taking notes and taking tests and quizzes. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it, it didn't really, allow students to, to have more ownership of the learning process and be more engaged and more involved and, and more creative and all those things. And, and one of the things I'm really excited about being back in Lincoln County is I'm seeing so much of that uh, higher thinking going on. The students being challenged at a higher level uh, as they go through their classes and uh, so many unique opportunities uh, through, through a, a variety of experiences uh, through the uh, Lincoln County education experience. So, Excited about that, but at the same time, you know, football's paralleled that as well. Football, you know, when I was coming through, and uh, uh, Dr. Heath and his bunch came up through high, uh, into his sophomore year, and um, uh, you know, basically, Dr. Heath and they're, they're, those guys were tough. I mean, they were, he had his senior class that was a very talented class, and I remember coming in as a sophomore, me and the rest of the guys, and. You know, we thought we were the stuff. We were going to show them how to how to play football, and uh, I'll never forget being introduced to uh, Lincoln County football. My my uh, spring spring of my uh, uh, going into my sophomore year, and um, uh, I was Coach Meadows was running. So I, I can't remember what we were running exactly, but I was going across the middle, wasn't paying attention, and uh, Dr. Heath will know this name, Gilmore Ford introduced me to Lincoln County football and it was one of those hits you know where I'm just totally blindsided not looking and as they call it the old snot bubbles you know and all that and, and I go back to the huddle trying to you know try, try to catch my breath and be tough at the same time um, but but those days of uh of, of being tough and playing hard-nosed football, that still wins. You still have to be tough. Uh, obviously, football is a tough game. You still have to block and tackle. But the transformation of, of how coaches approach football, much different than what we experienced with the old, as they say, three yards in a cloud of dust. And, uh, and you see, and, and I had, you know, talking about my journey and some of the experiences I had, I had the experience of coaching with uh, or, or being an administrator at a school with a guy named Kevin Kelly. And if you haven't, if, if you follow football at all, you need to Google Coach Kelly up and, and see what, what, how his approach to football and what he does because it's very different. And I was very skeptical, to be honest, uh, but it just goes to show that no matter what your approach or philosophy is, if you, if you play good fundamental football, you can approach it a lot of different ways. And Coach Kelly is known as the no punt coach. And when I say no punt, I mean it's fourth and ten on your own 20-yard line and – and he's going for it, okay? Now, Coach Kelly's a big data guy, and, and he and I text routinely. I, we're, we got to be good friends while I was out there. He's a man, uh, man of great character. Um, but he's a big data guy, and he just looked at the statistics, and he said, you know, really what you're giving up by giving up that possession, by punting, um, it's, it's not worth it. You, you're better off in the long run going for it every time on fourth down than punting. Now. Uh, I'm not sure I'm ready to buy into that yet. I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm going to hold my job if we're punting uh, if we're not punting when it's uh, fourth and twenty on our own ten or something. But but that was his approach, and it, and and he really bought into and it, and expanded me and my mind into thinking from a, out of the box, if you will. You've read much of Malcolm Gladwell and what Gladwell uh, says in his books. It really forces you to look at things from a different perspective. And again, that I think you're seeing that. Uh, in a lot of different ways in our society, but certainly in education and in, in, in sports and athletics and especially football, uh, the, the transformation of being able to do unique things uh, and still be successful doing things a different way, you know, not just doing 
Uh, sure, there's a lot of tried and true ways that will still work, but doing things that uh, are unique, maybe a little unorthodox, but are still, you can be very successful doing those. So uh, that's part of what we're going to be instilling uh, this fall. Uh, and if we need to take chances, we'll take chances. If, if We're going to do whatever we have to do to give our kids the best chance to win. And, and that's what it's all about on Friday nights. They do keep score, last I checked. And as long as they're keeping score, we're going to do uh, all we can to have one more point at the end of the day than the other team. Um, but that approach, um, the, just the hard work, and then the fundamentals, of course, of blocking, tackling, taking care of the football, um, those are the things we're going to be working on between now and next fall. And uh, I think you'll, you'll be real proud of the grit that you're going to see among the uh, Falcon football team. I, I've been very, very pleased with the effort and attitude of our kids. It's a great reflection of, of the families that are in the Lincoln County school system. You know, our families are obviously doing a great job of raising, raising kids because uh, we, we get to work with those young men and young women every day. And uh, the great majority of them have a fantastic attitude and really are, uh, understand what they're doing right now is, is laying a foundation for their future. And so they, they take it pretty serious and we have fun too. Um, but it's been a great experience thus far. And, and I'm already, it seems like, you know, if you're in my shoes and you go through the calendar, it seems like, boy, that first game is right around the corner. So uh, we, we're working hard. We got a long way to go before we're ready to play that first game against Lawrence County, but, but we're going to be ready when it comes. I want all you guys to come out and, and I really want it to be back to Friday Night Lights and, and a huge community event, if at all possible. Uh, build that, build that uh, feeling, that, uh, that Falcon fever uh, that was born back in the 1980s. And, um, and I certainly feel honored to, to uh, follow in the footsteps of my, my high school coach, who, by the way, at 94 years old, Coach Mettis came to visit visit me uh, about about a month ago <laughs> so coach met is 94 you know he's he's on up there <laughs> and uh who's driving him well his his young wife who drove him up from uh, scottsboro and i said coach i would have come to get you i would have come down there I said, no johnson he still calls me johnson i'm all right you know just <laughs> and so he rolls into the office and didn't know what he wanted to talk about what he what he wanted to talk about for about two hours was football you know, we got back in there and talked about football just like he was still coaching back in, his, uh, back in the 80s. He, he still loves it and still, still very sharp, very sharp as well. So that was a real honor. But it, it's such an honor for me to follow in the footsteps of Coach Meadows, Coach Thompson, and Coach Thomas, uh, who is a, a great friend of mine, uh, and, and be the fourth, only the fourth coach at Lincoln County High School. And we're going to continue to build upon the foundation that – that all those guys have put down, and we do have a strong foundation, and we do have a strong tradition, and and uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a tough competition out there, but but we we're, we're excited about where we are, we're excited about the kids we have, and look forward to uh, look forward to the future of Falcon football. So, without further ado, uh, whether it's about education and and my my experiences in education or about football. The floor is wide open for any questions. I'll, I'll, if, I don't, if I don't know the answer, I'll point to Dr. Heath and he'll, he'll make up something. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody got any questions? Yes, yes. His whole philosophy, Coach, uh, Dr. Heath is asking about Coach Kelly's philosophy, and it's a whole approach and philosophy. It includes going for it, going for two points. Uh, after every touchdown, okay, very seldom will they kick an extra point. It's so going for it for two points after every touchdown. Onside kicking, onside kicking after every every uh, touchdown, um, or occasionally when they go for a field goal, um, and going for it on fourth down every time. Um, and, and another thing he does that's unique is on punt returns, um, they just play it safe, and as soon as the ball's punted, his whole punt team will just run off the field. They won't even touch, attempt to touch the, the punt um, for fear of fumbling it or whatever, and he'll just take it wherever it is and go from there, you know. And, and uh, by the way, he just won his fourth consecutive state championship in the state of Arkansas, so in six, six and eight years or something like that. So. So don't think it's gimmicky, and he's just no. I know mean, it is a wild, wild west show. I'll tell you, football. I mean, it's it was a fun environment, and I really think you'll see more, more uh, teams go to that that approach in some shape, form, or fashion. Like I said, I'm not ready to buy into it 
wholeheartedly, but, but it certainly can work. And, but, it, but all of that really boils down to you know, what the buy-in from your kids is. If you get your kids to buy in, whatever you do, uh, if they're out there really working hard and you're fundamentally sound, you can do whatever approach uh, that you want to take. Obviously, I, and I always said high school, high school coaches have a, a more unique challenge than college or pros because college, obviously, college guys go out here and recruit their talent to fit their system. NFL guys go out here and buy their talent and get the players to fit their system. High school guys, high school coaches, we just have to take whatever shows up at the door and, and, and tweak our system to fit the talent. Um, and so that's a, that's a un, more unique challenge, I think, than what the college and pros guys, uh, NFL guys uh, have to see. So it's good. Good question. What else? Yes, sir. Well, it depends on how the game's going. <laughs> the question is, is how, what the style of my coaching on the sideline is. Um, usually, I'm just uh, kind of focused on the next down. You know, we, we, we see the next down, and, uh, and, and it's so hard. You know, you're trying to get into the head of the coach across the sideline. A lot of communication between our coaches on the sideline and from upstairs in the press box. So, I believe a lot of collaboration through the game because one of the important things is – is uh, hopefully you're getting better, you're making the right adjustments through the game. And so I think that's important. Um, I'm, not, I'm not big on getting on to the referees or, or you know, I mean, there's, there's going to be calls that probably go bo both ways. And unless it's just something really bad, I usually, uh, those refs have a tough job. I, I usually uh, just let them do their job and, and have a sidebar conversation with them at halftime if there's something that I'm really concerned about. But um, just generally, uh, I think you'd see me, uh, and, I'll, and I'll, be, I'll be calling defenses. Uh, I really enjoy the defensive side, and most of my experience has been on the defensive side. Uh, so I'll be calling defense. So I'll be more highly engaged on making those adjustments and, and focused on that. Of course, collaborating with the offensive guys uh, when we're on offense, but letting them do their job. All right. I saw another hand over here. Tim, tell everybody about our, our 1982 class football year. Tell, about, tell everybody about that. <laughs> well, Don's asking about uh, the 1982 season, and some of you are around for that. Uh, really special, special group of guys, special class, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, you go back and look at that and, and how it, that year really um, – and, and I have to back up a little bit because – it was, and, I, and I'm not just uh, blowing smoke here for my boss. Dr. Heath and the, the basketball team of 1980, was it, that went to the state uh, basketball tournament. Right as that was the second year or first year that Lincoln County, first year Lincoln County High School opened, and immediately we had a basketball team going all the way to the state tournament, um, which – you know, let's call it like it is. At that time, uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of folks in the various communities around the around the county who who had not bought into a comprehensive Lincoln County High School, and through largely through athletics, but through a lot of different groups and clubs and organizations, people were beginning to see that pulling the county together with the one comprehensive high school. Uh, could mean a lot of success for for our kids, and and it started back there in 1980, and I think that momentum really propelled all sports and, and, and academics and everything to think, yeah, you know, we can compete with anybody, and uh, and so as we came through and led by Coach Meadows and, and the great staff we had then, um, in building the program, uh, we just really started believing and, and wanting to get to the playoffs. And back then, only one team out of your conference made the playoffs in football. And uh, it was a lot of competition. And, and we opened the season with Franklin County, who had traditionally been the top dog in our conference. And it was a big rivalry game. game. And so uh, we had to beat them first. And finally, our senior year, we got over that hump and then you know rode that momentum. And, and uh, we were a good high school football team, but I don't think anybody would say we were overwhelmingly blessed with uh, uh, talent. Uh, we didn't have a ton of guys going to, 
to uh, SEC, uh, et cetera, um, or Division One schools. Um, but we played really hard. And I think go back if if there's a a word that that could summarize or encapsulate the what that team played with, it was grit. You know, we we were very determined. We loved playing the game. Uh, we had uh, a great chemistry among each other. We had a ton of fun playing. I had great, uh, just a, a great offensive and defensive line there. I had Randy Trenum and, and Joey O'Connor, and I could go right through to Charles Ray Palmer and uh, right, right down the list of really good high school football players. And then uh, my, my good, good friend who uh, actually was killed in a car accident not long after our 10-year anniversary, Doc Webb, Marcus Webb, who was a phenomenal uh, student athlete, it was just an epitome of what a, what a student athlete should be. And, and so we had just great chemistry there. Uh, Coach Mendes did a great job of coaching us along with the rest of the staff. But, but I, I think part of what, you know, and, and Don could uh, attest to this, is why, what made it so special was the buy-in from the community and from the school and the students. And I mean, it was, it was just really, truly the, the Friday Night Lights experience. Um, you know, if you've seen if you've seen the movie, remember the Titans. It was kind of that. We were still coming together as a community, as a county, and and um, you know, I feel like I lived the Remember the Titans uh, kind of of, of uh, plot, if you will, uh, through that experience. It was, it was a great experience in a lot of different ways. Of course, we were the Cinderella team. You're keeping up with the NCAA. Anybody have? Those, you know, in the end, you've got three number one uh, seeds or, or two number one seeds and, a, and another highly seeded team in the final four this year. And then, of course, you've got the Cinderella, uh, Loyola, what is it, Loyola, yeah, Chicago. Well, we were the Loyola of that year uh, and made it all the way to the state championship. Nobody saw us coming. We'd never been to the playoffs before. And then we're playing this traditional power in, uh, in uh, Gallatin. Uh, they had won several state championships through the 70s, and and so uh, that was that was a unique experience. And then all of a sudden, you you go onto the field, and there's 26,000 people at Vanderbilt Stadium. So uh, that that was just an amazing experience. And and of course, the game you couldn't have written a better script. It goes into overtime. You know, we win win the game in overtime, and the, the place goes nuts. Um, and so that. That's the kind of experience, you know, I want to see our kids have, you know, whether we get to state championships or not, but just uh, the ability to compete at that high level, uh, to have that kind of chemistry among your team, um, that's, that's just priceless. You know, you just can't, those kind of experiences uh, are just special. So, it's good. What about if overtime with the Gallatin game, give us the play-by-play. -play. <laughs> <laughs> Gallatin got the ball on the first yeah. down. You're right. You know, Galton, uh, uh, going back to that overtime, <laughs> first of all, I was really tired. <laughs> so that, was, that was a long, hard fault game. We'd been back on our heels uh, the whole game. And um, it was just a, a very, very hard nosed game. And so we, we get into overtime, and Galton gets the ball uh, first. And uh, that's, that's usually you want to be on defense first and out overtime typically. So that was an advantage because then you know exactly what you have to do to win uh, or at least to go into two overtimes. And so uh, Gallatin, Gallatin gets the ball, and um, we'd shut them down pretty well during the night. They'd moved the ball well, but we'd got, we got turnovers all night long to help us stay in the game. Um, I think first down they ran their great running back who ended up being a good friend of mine at, Carl, uh, at, Gall at Vanderbilt. Um, Carl Woods. I think they ran him. We stopped him for no gain there. And uh, they really had a good call play, uh, on the second down, I believe. And it may have been first down, but they ran a play action pass, which they had not done a whole lot of through the year or through the game. And the guy was really open, but thankfully we had enough pressure on the quarterback. He didn't make a great throw. And, uh, and so the ball just hit the turf. And we stopped him on third down. So they didn't gain anything. And they ended up kicking a field goal, and it was good. Uh, so they're up uh, 10 to 7 uh, there as, uh, as their possession ended. We get the ball, and we had been trying to run, um, you know, one of our bread and butter plays was just the, the old classic student body right or student body left, just a sweep right. 
And we'd had limited success all night. They were doing a really good job of defending it. And um, uh, Coach Meadows tweaked the, the blocking scheme a little bit. And, and I think that helped us get on the corner finally. Again, my buddy Doc Webb made a great block on the corner. Um, I didn't really get touched uh, on the sweep. It was a sweep play to the right. So I was a left half, and I would, got the pitch from Matt Slayton, of course, who Matt's still, uh, still a businessman here in town. And, and uh, didn't, get, didn't get touched about, I think, the four or five-yard line. And, and uh, um, fortunately, I was able to just kind of find a little hole to dive into among three or four. Uh, Gallatin players, and um, you know the the thing, the thing I always uh, look back on is is just you know if if we would not have gotten in right then, kicking a field goal, what it would have been like to go into two overtimes, those kind of things go through your head. But fortunately, able to cross the goal line and and win the game there, um, just jubilation and. and <laughs> And just total exhaustion, really, after the game. But just hearing the crowd, I don't know, um, Mr. Jimmy Bills and Mr. Tommy Holland uh, were, were calling the play, and, and I think that's their, their excitement in the booth. <laughs> if you have never heard that, it's, it's, the audio of that is, is pretty, pretty amazing. And, and, and as it turned out, the audio is pretty much what we have because uh, the film, um, understandably, they were trying to film everything that night. It just... For, uh, for memories, and so since they filmed everything and they didn't cut it off too much, the, the film cuts off just as that last play is about to start. So we don't, I don't know who has a, a copy of, of the actual last play of the game where we scored a win, but, um, but it, that, that was obviously a unique time. Uh, the class of 83 that I graduated with, just a fantastic group of people. I mean, I just, I, I'll, I'll never, forget so many of those friends that I have, and a lot of them still in the community, so it's been fun reconnecting with them. One, one of the best statements I saw after that ball game, I think his, I think his name was Ricky Barnes. I know he was, I know he was Barnes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and as we were leaving the stadium, some people from Galton were saying, well, where in the world is Lincoln County? <laughs> Says just a little bit below gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, so that was a, you know, going back to the t shirts, um, when Jefferson, we played in the semifinal game out here, and uh, it was against Jefferson County, who again, Jefferson County was a, a very big traditional power coming from East Tennessee at that time, back in those days, and, uh, and they were some big, strong country boys now I'm telling you and uh, they came down here and they had uh, they had t-shirts they were wearing before the game uh, because the state championship game was going to be at, at Vanderbilt they had t-shirts made up said Vandy bound and and so you know we, did, we didn't take that too well as they were walking around our field with Vandy bound on their on their uh, on their chest there and that was a heck of a ball game as well and, and that was you know uh, an incredible environment just electric environment there at, uh, as a, at the pit, as it became known there at Meadows Thompson uh, Stadium uh, that night, because they brought a huge crowd from East, East Tennessee as well. So it was a packed house. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yes, ma'am. Nashville still knows where we are today because of, because of those days, I think. I think so. I think so, yeah. We, we were able to, through uh, not just that year, of course, that started that run. And like I said, we, we had a pretty good team that year, but. The late 80s, early 90s, that run of, of talent and, of course, a lot of great coaching along the way um, for, a, for a relatively small community like Lincoln County, the run of talent that, that went through here in the 80s and 90s, uh, very unique, very special uh, years there um, because, it, you know, it, there's been a couple occasions, I believe, where Lincoln County has been ranked nationally, which – uh, that that tells you a lot as well. So we hope to get back to those days. We're not quite there yet, but we're going to get back there. We're going to get back there. Anybody else? All right, folks. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>